Okay, so this is lecture one of airborne infections and respiratory diseases. Hey y'all, uh, and welcome back. Um, today is the start of week eight, which is absolutely incredible to me. Um, and we're going to be talking about airborne infections, infection, infections and respiratory diseases, among other things. And my clicker doesn't work. Okay. Hey all, and I cannot believe it's week eight, but here we are. And today we're going to be talking about airborne infections and respiratory diseases. So let's get right to it. So the main respiratory diseases are things like asthma, uh, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, lung cancer, tuberculosis, and any number of AIs that you might have heard from acute respiratory infections. And that includes pneumonia, upper respiratory infections, acute lower respiratory infections, severe acute respiratory illness, um, among other things. So I'm going to scratch my head a little bit, and we're going to move on to the next slide. Global burden of respiratory diseases. So respiratory diseases are no joke. Um, account for 6.48% of all global mortality. Uh, lower respiratory has another four, between four and five, and then TB has another two. So we're talking almost 15% of worldwide mortality comes from respiratory diseases. Worldwide, uh, when you look at mortality, again, same pattern we've been seeing over and over and over again. Um, developing countries have a much higher share of the burden of respiratory um, disease-related mortality. So. Worth, 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 worth approaching, of course. Uh, risk generally comes from lower socioeconomic, poor socioeconomic conditions that produce pulmonary exposures to toxins, passive exposures linked to living conditions, occupation. Um, it's often a result of long term exposures that produce, produce chronic symptoms. Um, Dalys lost might, in the end, be more important than deaths themselves. I mean, in terms of the impact on people's lives, uh, dying is one thing, of course. Um, but you know, you know, quality of life is lowered uh, through through compromised ability to breathe. Um, in the states, we're really all over. You're talking about a lot of, lot of air pollution determinants uh, from air pollution, um, poor living conditions. Um, exposure to contaminants, all different kinds of things. Uh, respiratory diseases of infectious ideology only share some of these, these characteristics. But respiratory infections are things like TB, influenza, smallpox, which is gone, SARS, SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19, hantavirus, pertussis, measles, rhinovirus, respiratory syncytial virus, pneumonia, legionnaire disease, and, and there's many, many others. The lungs themselves, uh, the oral cavity, uh, the nasal cavity, is, is a main entry point for a lot of pathogens, as, you, as you've already figured out. And it's no accident that pathogens will take um, root in, in either the nasal passages, the throat, or the lungs. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Where did you get it? So this is a huge question, right? You know, like when we're talking about COVID, right? Um, it's very difficult to figure out where the source of infection actually was. So it's in contrast to foodborne illnesses, where you can actually go and test the soup, for example, and see if there's a pathogen in the soup. Um, and figure out, well, everyone ate the soup, so that's, it comes from the soup. But with respiratory infections, it gets a little more challenging. Because we can't actually observe um, the pathogen entering the body in, in that sense. Um, obviously, we can do some sort of controlled experiment, um, certainly with animals, preferably not with humans, um, where they've intentionally exposed uh, animals to pathogens to see how these things transmit. But with humans, it's a lot more difficult. So, for example, if you've ever had influenza or a cold, it is almost impossible for you to tell, say with 100% certainty where you actually got it. And that's, you know, no, no doing those small sort of part to the complexity of, of transmission, the complexity of, infection, of respiratory transmission. Um, yeah, so think about these questions anyway. So 
<laughs> when we talk about transmission, uh, we're talking about different types of things. Close contact, is someone coughing in your face, for example. Uh, airborne transmission, where someone is across the room and they're coughing. Um, and uh, fomites, where people cough or like, wipe their nose and touch something, and then you come around and touch it and get infected that way. Um, so, yes, close contact, airborne fomites. Infections versus transmission. My mic is under my shirt, so maybe you can't hear me. I don't know. I hope you can hear me. I'll fix that. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Go back. This is like a real lecture. Infections versus transmission. Respiratory infection is not synonymous, synonymous with airborne or aerosol, aerosol transmission. Respiratory refer, refers to the site of the disease, often the site of initial colonization. Airborne is a dissemination of microbial aerosols to suitable port of entry, usually the respiratory tract. Suspension of particles wholly or partly comprised of the microorganism, droplet nuclei following evaporation of fluid from the droplet. We're going to talk about this in a second. Um, different than droplet spread, direct infection of mucous membranes in the eyes, mouth, or throat. Droplets are particles less than five micrometers, partly because comprised of the microorganism itself, which rapidly drop to the ground. Um, you think of the one meter rule. <clears throat> um, this is kind of an interesting graphic here. Um, we have different uh, outbound sources of, of pathogen. And um, <clears throat> particle size. So particle size uh, varies um, widely. So fomites would tend to be the largest. Um, lower respiratory tract expulsions tend to be tend to be the smallest. Transmission modes: particles are expelled by coughing and sneezing, rapidly shrink in size by evaporation, thereby increasing the number of particles that behave as aerosols. So you can think, like you look in this picture, this, this, this person's coughing. Um, heavy droplets will fall to the ground, but as 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 as, as water evaporates, um, you're left with smaller and smaller particles, which can travel farther, longer, and longer distances. Uh, droplet nuclei. This phenomenon ex, ex affects particles with a diameter di diameter and emission of less than 20 micrometers. Complete desiccation decreases diameter to a little less than half of the initial size. And they're hygroscopic, easily absorb, absorb moisture. moisture. Um, it varies on the pathogen. So I read a paper once about um, COVID-19 that said um, um, particles can, can remain in the air for up to 20 feet for a very long time. Um, it really depends. So, but there's a lot that's not known about aerosol transmission. Um, mechanics. Uh, well, this just, just sort of reiterates what we just said. Um, there's physical decay of, of evaporation of of um, um, water from the leaves, mostly mostly pathogen related particles inside. Airways and transmission, the colonization site, the particle size makes a difference here. Uh, nasal pharynx is usually the largest, and when you get into the lower tract, you're talking about the smallest. Um, the mouth and the respiratory tract are designed in such a way so they can catch um, larger particles before they before they go deeper into, into the lungs. Um, and so smaller particles can escape that entryway and, and enter deeper into the lungs. Clear proof of aerosol transmission in TB um, through experiments with guinea pigs in the 1950s. Since then, there's been minimal research on aerobiology of infections, potential to control everything. We installed the images to study aerobiology of infections. Um, just detection is difficult. And, and the, the reality is, is that, that people become infected, and there's really not a whole lot we can do in between that. Masks help, and there's been research into masks, but it's really minimal research on aerobiology. Uh, settling time <clears throat> ends in the size, right? So size decreases over time, and you're left with small, small, sm smaller, and smaller particles. Pathogens differ a lot. This is very true. Um, some pathogens, like this um, meningitis, meningitis, meningitis uh, 
that's just why it's poorly in the air. Others, others can survive for for a very long time. It really depends. And uh, some bacteria can lose, lose their infectiousness as, as they spend more time in the air too. I answer questions. How many aerosol particles does an individual produce and what are the sizes? I don't know. Individual differences in size and lung capacity or other factors. Uh, where do these particles originate? How do they generate? How effective are masks at blocking aerosols? That is an open question. It really is. Uh, masks uh, have been shown through a systematic review that uh, they do uh, re reduce the incidence of, of, of influenza-like illness, uh, but the existing evidence is incredibly sparse and findings are inconsistent uh, within and across the studies. Um, I, it's interesting to me that, that, that influenza patterns in Asia, for example, where mask wearing is, is somewhat ubiquitous, uh, tend to be the same as, as here, where most people don't wear masks, haven't worn masks until recently. So you sort of question yourselves, is, you know, are the masks effective in controlling transmission? And if we ask yourselves, are they effective given that people tend to take them off in places where transmission can occur, for example, like when they're hanging out in their house with their family? I'm not hanging out with friends, so it's a big open question there, but wear your masks, for sure. Not going to definitely tell you not to wear those masks. So, uh, that is the end, oh, that's our risk factors for respiratory infections. Um, they're all over the place. Uh, infection risk can be impacted by behavioral, environmental, physiological, and biological determinants. Smoking, diet, and exercise are also huge. Uh, occupational hazards, living conditions, exposure to small children and daycare environmental pollution, um, and of course the host, uh, aspects of the host themselves are age, anatomical changes, immunocompromised know, conditions, previous respiratory infections, allergies, uh, many things. So that's it for this lecture, and if you have questions, please hit me up, because um, I am here to help you.